ability to provide to us right now. I I'm so excited to see some of these cards in play. When these cards start hitting the board, I, it's always a big grin on my face, right? When the players get their active Pokemon set up and they flip them over for the first time, you know that things are just going to explode. Yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, Justin is going to be pr bringing to the table here. It looks like it's going to be a fairly uh, consistent Palkia build. This is something that his testing group has been working on time and time again. Do the prizes make a big impact here? We do see one of those origin form Palkia V-Stars. The Radiant Greninja is a big prize. Mm, two Snorlax in the prize is also going to be a big deal. Being unable to get that Gormandai's ability for the draw could make the opening for this list a bit too slow. Yes, uh, it looks like there are four Snorlax oh, in well, this deck. Oh, well, never mind. Four <laughs> Snorlax? That's a greedy boy. He is out here trying to gormandize. Yes. And for those of you, you know, who are looking at a dictionary right now, he's looking to chow down on this card draw. That's right. It's not lunch just yet, but uh, maybe Sanders going to change our minds. Let me see. So we've got Ivatel up in the active, the celebrations with the Cry of Destruction, discarding, you know, those special energies, just locking your opponent down is exactly what Sander wants to do. And by seeing the Ivatel, you know, in the active like this, Justin can start immediately assessing the situation. I can, I, okay, special energy, not really going to be a problem for me, but this is a pretty easy target for me to take an, uh, an early prize. And now that Justin is looking through the deck here in the opener, figuring out what's in the prizes, you can make a decision. If you normally were going to be playing passive, you can be a little bit more aggressive to draw those prizes if a key piece is in there for you. Yeah, when you're, when you're sitting down against Sander on the other side and you're playing the most predictable deck in the format, it's probably a scary feeling. Of course, you see an Evitol on the other side, you start to think, okay, I don't play special energies. I'm, a good, I'm okay there. But what does he have in store for me? Because he has to have mm -hmm. an answer for Palkia, right? The definition of control is that when you have a strong read on the metagame, you bring a just bag of tricks, a strong toolbox that can allow you to counter and shut down almost anything you're going to play against. Each deck in the game relies on very specific flavors, right? You're pulling from a bunch of different pools of cards to put together the strategy that you want. And every time you pull from a certain strategy, you're opening yourself up to another counter or a different weakness. And when you're playing the new premier strong deck in Palkia, you've got a massive target on your back. Yeah, and Justin understands that, but he also foregoes that because he knows that the power the, uh, pa the power level of his deck is going to be something that a lot of players just can't work around regardless. It's the mm -hmm. same with the Mew deck. When you're just playing at a, at a premium level and mm -hmm. getting these big attacks off, you don't care what your opponent did to try to stop you. You're just going to do better. And with Hisui and the heavy ball, you're going to make sure that even the prize cards can't stop you. You're going to take a look, make sure that wow. there's nothing important there. And you're going to fish out that Radiant Greninja. Kyle, you were worried. We were like, oh no, <laughs> losing out on the concealed cards, losing out on this draw ability is going to be so devastating. But again, heavy ball saves us all. We're, we're saved. <laughs> That's right. You and reshuffle yes. the prize cards, put them back. No shenanigans here. And, you know, it's back down in the bottom corner, just going to redraw it again. And that's honestly maybe a good thing. If there's two Pokemon, basic Pokemon in there that you need, draw the heavy ball again and just reprise it. Yeah, we saw the cross switcher in there as well. So some good prize cards that Justin is sure, surely going to take note of. It's oh, one thing man. that these players pride this themselves on. This is looking on. a little bit weird for Sander. Has the Evatel stranded in the active, has the Galarian Meowth but really nothing else to threaten with. A lot of tools in hand, but needs to find an attacker. Oh. Only an attach pass. Oh, man. A attach pass. I'd love to see the data about <laughs> how many games are players realistically able to bring back from a turn to attach pass like this. It's not good. <laughs> if, <laughs> of course, when you're playing control, a lot of turns do look like this. You just hope that it is with Snorlax and a Gormandize to yeah. get you through the rest of your hand. If, yeah, because Gormandize, the special Pokemon ability, when you use it, it ends your turn. So it's almost like you're attacking, but you just draw so many cards, and you're able to get the rest of your setup. Uh, Justin going to just dip into the deck now, taking advantage of this lull in the competition, Irida finding a water Pokemon and now an item card. And again, a bit of a pseudo Starbirth. 
being able to find the perfect pieces you need to complete your setup, find that next card you might want to pivot or boost an attacker. Capacious Bucket also finding the water energy, going to start feeding into this Radiant Greninja. Justin is looking to just run away with this game as soon as the cards start coming together, especially with two Sobbles down. We're going to see Drizziles. We're going to see even more Search. The Palkias are ready to go. Um, I've got to wonder what Xander is thinking. He's thinking, oh gosh, <laughs> Justin is popping off. And sure enough, he is. You already see the water energies down in the discard pile. That's going to be so amazing right now for a star portal lining up. That's one of the benefits of playing this Palky of V-Star deck is you don't have to worry about that opening energy attachment. You can go ahead, use these cards to draw and get through your deck by use of the, the Radiant Greninja, and then start to lean into that Pokemon. Get these, get, use your, let your ability catch you back up while these amazing trainers and supporter cards do all all the work that an Arceus would have already done. Oh, man. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's how yep. you play a game of Pokemon, that's, I guess. That's how it goes. You, you know that your opponent's just getting so far ahead of you. And this is, again, a very underrated skill that we try to talk about is um, knowing when the game is lost. I think that everybody deep down wants to be the protagonist. They want to run it back. They want to have that awesome top deck, that delicious victory that come from behind win but you've got to be realistic, especially again, when the rounds are timed like this, the Swiss rounds, you have to just know that I'm just going to get a better start. I'm going to get off to a better foot. I'm going to take game two. I'm going to take game three. And Xander, especially playing control, when you're running so many ways to counter your opponent, it's a little bit more common that you're going to come out empty sometimes or have a very slow start that your opponent can exploit. And when you shuffle the cards and try again, this control deck, could very easily keep you from even pretending like you're playing the game. This is probably the biggest nightmare that a control player can find, and it's losing that opening game as fast as possible. You do not have time to win two games. Mm -hmm. Sanders probably going to be working as hard as he can to get a, a game two win and lock that in as just a tie for the round. And if that's possible, of course, you take that against a player of the caliber of Justin Bakari, but never feels good to work as hard as you can for 45 minutes. Oh my gosh, these prize cards, what is happening for Justin? This is what you wanna see. If you're Sander, if you're trying to bring back a set, you've gotta cross your fingers just a little bit and hope that the Pokemon coins and prize cards land in your favor. We've got Radiant Greninja back in the prizes, one out of 60. And now we got a few Palkia down. So if Sander identifies this and can take down this Palkia V that is in the active, Justin is really going to struggle to pivot to a new attacker. All right, the cat's out of the bag. You can see already in Sander's hand and deck, it is Mewtwo V Union. Uh, some cards that we never really saw would see the competitive stage. And sure enough, Sander found a way to bring it here. It is a, a, a very interesting uh, mechanic that we have in the Pokemon TCG where you need to get all four of these pieces into the discard pile so that you can start s summon this huge Mewtwo V Union Pokemon and start to do some pretty amazing things. And sure enough, Justin's going, oh boy, there's a lot going on here. I need to learn. Yeah, the V Union, it just, it's the Pokemon gets to have multiple abilities, way more attacks than you normally be, ha uh, would normally have access to. And with the right engine, the potential to just get this massive juggernaut into play and start raining damage counters down onto your opponent's side is what Sanders going to be looking for here. And now that we've got one piece in the discard pile, none prized, um, already off to a much better start. But Justin, once again, now the cat's out of the bag, can begin to immediately adapt to that circumstance. Battle VIP Pass is going to ensure that he's going to have the best setup possible. Yeah, what an amazing card to start your turn off, just having the ability to go ahead and search through, find those basic Pokemon, and try to mimic the start that he had in game one. That was ex exactly what Justin was looking to do, and was able to find just that. And this list is one of those that we were talking about earlier, where there's so many different styles of playing the, the origin form Palkia. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, four battle VIP pass. So this is something that he's going to do pretty consistently. Battle VIP pass to get set up, getting those Sobbles down. If you can have multiple Drizziles cycling over and over again, you're going to get the cards you want to just bully your opponent. You know, you're able to get draw if you need it, the energy if you need it, the, you know, the bosses if you need it. And that's 
exactly what allows Palkia to be so dominant, right? Just as an out-of-the-gate deck that hasn't needed to have too much optimization done to it, but it's just a powerful, you know, just pillar that you can build the rest of your deck around. Sander, meanwhile, has t double Snorlax setup, has the Galarian Meowth, its ability allowing you to just discard cards out of your hand, which is exactly what you need for V Union Pokemon. Hits the Crushing Hammer heads, gonna slow Justin down ever so slightly. Whoa, d double V Union discard there with the Galarian Meowth. Three out of four. <laughs> we are getting even closer. Yes, that's right, the Evolution Roar ability, but there's no Galarian Berserker here. We're just going to throw those away, fail a search, and keep on moving. Rose Tower also now being established here. You can draw back up to three cards. And Sander is playing the wildest style of control I've ever seen. Normally, when you think of control in a card game, the player sitting there with a massive hand, they have so many different ways to disrupt what you're doing. They're just kicking back and laughing in their maniacal villain tower. <laughs> But now this one is playing just this style of, I don't need a bunch of cards. I'm looking to discard these very specific targets. It's, it's a control combo deck. Yeah, we see the Peonia, a card that you're going to see in a lot of control builds, just trying to make sure that you have access to every card possible if you do prize one of those Mewtwo pieces. That's mm -hmm. a, a real bad story for you. So want to make sure that you at least get a little more information and get to manipulate what prizes you're drawing into potentially later on. Mm -hmm. And again, as you talked about, Kyle, the Hisui and Heavy Ball can only find basic Pokemon, so it's not going to work for those V Union pieces. But three out of four, this is, if, if I'm Justin, even though I have, I feel as though I have a strong setup here, when you see three out of four of the V Union pieces in the discard pile, you, you're already starting to sweat, I think, a little bit. You're just thinking and thinking, how can I adapt to this big threat about to hit play? At the very least, that is the, the silver lining, that this is very much telegraphed for Justin. He has all the time to prepare here. Yeah, Justin just going ahead and using that Melanie. Going to uh, get that energy accelerated that was gone from the crushing hammer previously. So mm -hmm. says, thank you, Sander. I'm going to take that energy back and get three additional cards. And sure enough, has an attacker ready to go. Drops the path. And I think we're going to prize card city. Yep. Snorlax number one goes down. One prize card for Justin. Every single deck that we've seen, when you're going up against a big attacker like this, you have to just start you know, sacrificing your single prize Pokemon to buy you a few more rounds and get this Mewtwo V Union in play. Second, uh, Snorlax means that if Sander comes up empty, at the very least, he'll be able to draw some more cards, but still trying to find that fourth piece. We do see Peonia again. Yep, we again, just we'll looking at the prizes. prize cards here. Just trying to figure out where that fourth piece is. Trying to just manipulate. You, you Basically, Peonia allows you to use your prize cards as another hand. So that's even more resources that, that Sander has to track. Because yes. he, you're like, okay, I have an extra hand of cards over here. And then you have to be very specific and careful about what you then put back into your prizes. What do I not need? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a dangerous game when you're playing control because you might not see those cards for a while. Drawing mm -hmm. prize cards can, uh, can be a little hit or miss, but of course we know that Mewtwo V Union has plenty of big attacks that it could start to work on. And oh boy. Oh, there it is. The, <laughs> the hand of the it. forbidden one. It is coming together. The quick ball is going to be the last pitch required to get that Mewtwo V Union down. And uh, this is probably the biggest Pokemon we have ever seen in a, tournament play. A V Union, <laughs> y'all at home. And here at NAIC, this is the prophecy. We talked about these potential archetypes that aren't quote unquote meant to be competitive, and the players just optimize them, adapt, and just elevate these decks. We're going to see Mewtwo V Union hit the bench shortly, and we're going to read the short novel about all the stuff that it's capable of. Yeah, there's, there is so much going on with this Pokemon and what it is capable of. 
Uh, the potential to hit for 300 damage, to spread 16 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you oh like. Oh, Lord. Why not heal 200 damage from yourself? And you know what? If you're having a hard time finding those Psychic Energies, go ahead and search two of them from your discard pile and attach them to this po oh from your yeah from your discard and attach them to this Pokemon so a little bit of everything and of course why not it is Mewtwo after all Mewtwo is the you know the Gen One or favorite everybody loves him but I'm glad the viewers couldn't see my face while you were reading that off Kyle because <laughs> I was just flabbergasted at everything that this Pokemon wants to do and 16 damage counters. Uh, you know, my math is pretty bad, but <laughs> you're going to be taking some big spread damage, big prize turn. You know, Mewtwo resurrecting the soul of Rapid Strike, Urshibu, and Jolteon V, yep. like this classic spread damage dex. And, and Sander identifying that, hey, you know, spread damage is pretty good in the current metagame, but I still want to run tons of draw, lots of control tools. I don't think I've ever seen three Snorlax in play at any given time at once <laughs> like this. Yeah, you, you even see the, the play around from the Radiant Greninja with the Cape of Toughness onto the Galarian Meowth. Sander is not giving any free prizes to Justin at this point in time. Yeah, you got to make your opponent fight for it. Like you said, Kyle, do as much as you can to cut off avenues of your opponent to work their way back into the game or disrupt you at all. Hisui and Heavy Ball just shuffling the prizes back down. Five left for Justin, even though not a lot of prizes have been taken. This game is about to explode. Yeah, J Justin just got his first real peek at those prize cards. Of course, probably had some information from the deck searches, but sees all of those big attackers he'd like to potentially try to sneak into this matchup, not going to have access to. But the, the heavy ball is at the bottom of the prize card, so just one more prize and we'll be able to Crushing get more hammer. access. Hammer. I think like, it was no. a Tails, went a little bit off frame there. But that's okay. You just want to you want to empty your hand down at this point. You've got the Gorman dies ready to go. And here's the thing: the the Mewtwo V Union is set up. But now there's the tricky part of finding the right opportunity to actually get it into play when you have the combination of cards necessary to get the Psychic Energy attachment and see what you need. Pukimuku also doing a little bit of work here to just go back onto the bottom of the deck, draw one more card, and Sander just cycling through the deck beautifully. Silene. One big heads. This and it's going to be enough. So then you can take a card from your discard pile to put it back on top of your deck. Finds the scoop up net. This is the next piece of the puzzle. You need to find a way to get this big, giant, fat Snorlax out of the active. <laughs> you know, you got to find that Poke Flute, wake him up, get him out of there. So then Mewtwo can take over and start raining down on these pitiable drizzles on the bench. He's not fat, he's just big boned. And he's also a sleepy <laughs> boy. We all love Snorlax. Yeah. Uh, like, when you, when you think back to like, you know, the earlier gens of Pokemon, uh, you know, everybody likes Pikachu and Mewtwo, but Snorlax, the unsung hero, the, the king of the plushie and uh, beanbag chair oh, game. Oh, yes. And there, there's nothing quite like uh, waking it up with the poke flute and, and catching it and thinking of how in the world did this thing fit into a Pokeball? <laughs> <laughs> I think, wasn't it the heaviest Pokemon in Gen 1? I, I won't confirm or deny because mm. I don't know. Yeah, you know. That <laughs> but he's big. I, I, I hear you, dear viewer. You know, you, you know the Snorlax is your favorite Pokemon. Every Pokemon is someone's favorite. And uh, I definitely, I definitely hear you right now. Well, Justin, fulfilling the prophecy, did find the Hisuian Heavy Ball off the prize cards and will have access once again to the prize cards, taking a look, maybe mm -hmm. eyeing up one of those uh, additional attackers. There was another Palkia. There was a Radiant Greninja. But what Pokemon is going to get you across the threshold right here? It's so difficult because you have your setup completed. You're attacking. You're feeling good about yourself. It's just that when you're taking these single prizes like this, you know that it's only a matter of time before your opponent starts to eventually crack back against you. Marnie going to come down. Justin just trying his best to disrupt whatever Sander had been working on in the previous turn. This is so smart. When you're trying to close in on victory, make it very difficult for your opponent to defend. Um, this is your best bet for disruption. Just takes the easy knockout. Snorlax number three being considered to go back up into the active slot. But Sander has to make sure there's <laughs> enough cards left in the deck. 
Yeah, this is this is part of the strategy, of course, for Justin. He's trying to deny Gorman dies. Do not let your opponent have a big hand. If Control has access to seven and then one additional card off the top, they will have access to some pretty cool plays. So just don't give them that opportunity. Just go ahead and put them down on a four-card hand. Maybe they don't find that finishing piece they need to feel comfortable with the Mewtwo. Yeah, you've got to you've got to go back in. Quick ball finding Pukamuku, shuffling the deck. There's not a lot of cards left. The Marnie, all it did was just pull cards out of the hand, right? You know you can very easily get them again, but you've got to expend resources to do so, and that's just what Justin's trying to say here. You're running a deck with this many Snorlax, maybe I can just deck you out. Just a completely ridiculous turn of events. You think that when you're playing against the Control King, you just, oh, the V-Union's finally hitting. The four wow. pieces looks so blingy. <laughs> and he's so gigantic, too. I love it. The Just the impact and the flavor of these V-Union cards. It's such a spectacle to see. Professor's Research also now being deployed here to draw back up to seven and get the rest of the tools you need to support Mewtwo V-Union. Gets a tool jammer, one psychic energy, just needs a little bit more of an attachment here. And we can start with that, uh, you know, getting that damage counters finally down onto the bench. Well, you can start to see how the strategy lines up here. Not a lot of Pokemon on Sander's side of the board. That Tool Jammer going to stop maybe an increase in damage from cards like a Choice Belt. Mm -hmm. So now you see, oh, well, 310 hit points going ahead and already getting some energy acceleration by way of a Union gain from the Mewtwo V Union. Yeah, and well, now all the, all the energies cards, are, I think, have that. Yeah, so now the energies are there, ready to go, and there's not a way to deal over 200 damage, it looks like. So you could just continually heal this off every single turn. This is what a lot of other control decks like Blissey and uh, things like that have tried to do, right? Where either you, or even Duraludon, where either you're completely immune to your opponent's attacker, or they have to try to set up these two turn KOs, and you just deny that by healing with Hyper Potion and things of that nature. And so now with just Mewtwo V Union having recover and just healing that all back, Justin is just going to not be able to get through this huge wall. Yeah, let's let's go do a little bit of math here. It looks like Palkia will be able to do 180 damage at its peak with five bench Pokemon on their side and the two, one on the the other. So less than 200, and then you just start to need to work in those healing cards, like you're saying, and that's when you can start to sneak in those extra big attacks. 16 damage counters spread across the board, maybe 300 to the active Pokemon. Are you kidding me? It's I'm just speechless right now. When you see <laughs> when you see a deck like this that looked like it was so far behind the entire game, you're suddenly losing and then you aren't anymore. You you finally get your big premium attacker in play and you start to counter what your opponent is doing they, and they can't surmount that and suddenly the the prizes are equalized and completely you know, taken out of the picture. If you get rid of the all the Sobbles that are on the bench, the Radiant Greninjas, the Shady Dealings and Teleon, Justin's just going to have no more ways to find any potential outs. Well, Justin does sneak a little bit more than 200 down. He's got that Tool Scrapper, so removed the Tool Jammer, gets that belt uh, uh, live going right now, and we are going to see a little more damage than Sander anticipated. I mm -hmm. believe we're hitting at 210 right now. 210, it's close. I mean, we still have the healing. Buy ourselves another turn. And with the tool scrapper as well, Sanders may be feeling a little bit more, uh, a little bit worse from this position. You know, you're, you're thinking like, okay, I can just out heal all of Palkia's uh, damage. But having the counter for the counter, being able to still get over that threshold means that Justin is very confident in staying in this game. Avery was also just now picked up by Sander to narrow down your opponent's bench and then wipe it clean with that ability. Yeah, just going ahead and limiting the bench on the other side is a great way to reduce the damage output from Justin. And we also saw that Team Yells cheer 
added into the deck. That's a, a card that states, shuffle up to three of any combination of Pokemon and supporter cards, except for Team Yell's Cheer, from your discard pile into your deck. So a, just a great way to continue a nice flow with your deck mm -hmm. and try to avoid that deck out. Yeah, try to get those important tools back to pivot to the win, but as you said, avoiding that deck out is so important. You spend so much of your time gormandizing, professors researching, getting your V Union set up, that now that Sander is finally established, there is not, you know, very many cards left. And if Justin is somehow able to buy enough time, who knows if Sander might run out of cards. Because from this position, you, you can't really draw as much as you want to. Going to attach to Radiant Greninja to retreat back, bring that Palkia V-Star back into the active, scoop up Net to get the Shady Dealings and Teleon, rebench the Sobble, and now we've got another Drizzle to find one more piece. It's going to be close for sure here. Sander is just uh, a hair's breadth away from annihilating Justin's bench and just getting irreparably ahead here in game two, round two of the Swiss here at NAIC. Yep, Justin just trying now to to piece together. Well, I already saw the Avery get shuffled back. I know that's a card I need to start thinking about. Maybe I am going to start losing some of these bench Pokemon. I have to be hitting for over 200 damage if I want to stay in this game right now. I just can't afford that. And sure enough, Sander does too. Go ahead and use that scoop up net on the Glaring Meowth. And now there's no way that you're hitting for over 200. This is a, a very tough spot to be in if you're Justin. Yeah, super scary as well. Sander's going all in. When your active Pokemon is KO'd and you don't have any benched Pokemon to take its place, you will just lose immediately. But Sander realizes if Mewtwo V Union goes down, I'm out of this game regardless. So you're just going all in. Mewtwo V Union just fights on his own. And now we got this wild 1v6 going on. Finds the echoing oh. horn, though. Yeah, this is, hold on, buddy. I do want to hit for over 200. Echoing horn going to put a little bit more damage onto the Palkia. Maybe try to find a better target to swing into and get another prize card. I don't think Justin has anything important left in the prizes, but it's just a matter of trying to find enough targets to actually close out the game. Oh, going to give... Sander, the worst card there, the Evital. Of course, Miltank would have been kind of annoying. You don't want to work through that <laughs> ever. And uh, you don't want to give another Snorlax, potentially. So this, uh, this seems pretty fair. And yeah, Mewtwo looking a little bit weary here, taking damage, has to keep recovering it, keep healing that off. But Justin just slowly but surely leaves a few damage counters on it every single time, trying to maximize the bench here. And it's it's really just going to come down to whether Justin can can put together the pieces to find the prizes. As we close in on the end of game number two, it looks like the players are going to have enough time to play a solid uh, game three as well. Oh, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. You see, just a simple attach pass, att attach attack, or whatever. There's no attaching anything going on. It's just attacks. Yep. And, and then sure scoop enough, up net, recover, yeah. heals that damage right back. Mewtwo V Union with only four damage counters on it. And we're just keep on swinging. And everybody has been in this position. When you're playing against a control deck, you're trying to deal as much damage as you can to this incredibly bulky Pokemon that your opponent has put in front of you. And you just can't seem to get there. Well, Peonia is going to find the cook. Maybe the cook is the healing that can make this a little bit easier. Yeah, Sander making use of that second hand that he has waiting over on the side. Extra cards that he knows he's going to have access to had already put the Peonia back in the deck thanks to Team Yell's cheer. And with the deck being so thin, knew that it was just going to come almost immediately. Here comes Silene shuffling wow. back in. And uh, this, this is how you go infinite, ladies and gentlemen. You can just Silene and get that, uh, that team yell back and get, get the Silene over and over again. Get the pow pad, and it just cycles over and over. You can continue to use these cards. You just need to hit one heads. And sure enough, when you hit two, you can get some sneaky cards like that tool jammer back. 
Beautiful. So Tool Jammer going to take that Choice Belt away, going to strip away as much damage from this Palkia V-Star as possible, and then Mewtwo is essentially going to become invincible. This Palkia deck wants to get this set up, and this is your main attacker. You don't have anything else to pivot to, and if you can shut down this specific Pokemon, then you're just coasting to victory here. Yep, just quick turns from Justin, just going to uh, draw the card for the turn and attack. And finally, we do see that this Mewtwo is not going to be able to get knocked out uh, at any point if it continues to heal. Team Yell's tier being considered, but goes for the uh, Twin Energy instead. Just, again, a lot of resources at play, even though it looks like Sander's deck is so thin and that there's not a lot to do, because you have the ability to cycle these cards back into your deck, you do have to be very specific about wow. when and how you act to make sure you don't accidentally deck out. We do see the Avery now doesn't really want to draw cards, wants to instead make sure that you use it on an optimal turn. Now the Pal Pad is going to be what fills the deck at this point, finding the Silene, and that just continues this trend. If you start to hit any heads at this stage, Pal Pad is going to continue this trend over and over again. And Justin sees that his damage output is, is terrible right now, 120, unless he starts playing some Pokemon onto the board. And there's the pass. Sander dancing on the precipice of destruction, having almost no cards left in the deck, having no Pokemon on the bench. Oh, found does the hit heads. the heads. Does it the heads. Puts the pal pad back. So Sander is just, it looks like the, the paradox of looking like you're <laughs> on the verge of losing, yet being in such a dominant position at the same time is just boggling my mind right now, Kyle. This oh, is oh a boy. wild, like, infinite here we go. setup. It's big. It's big time here. The cook is coming down. The heel is coming. Finally found a turn where he feels comfortable and is going to take a huge 300 damage knockout on the Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Origin Form Palkia V-Star goes down. Sandra takes two prize cards, and all we need now is this Palkia V to get softened up a bit and then we get to rain down that 16 damage counter spread. Oh, this is absolutely absurd. Could just remove the bench if he wanted to at this stage. It's, a, it's 150, 15 damage counters right now. Would completely clear it and leave Palkia with nothing to do here. Uh, but it is important to note that this is just the origin form Palkia V. And uh, they're just using the three energy attack instead of having to be reliant on a bench at this stage. So. Uh, interesting to see how this looks now from Justin's side. Now that the turns have been passing back and forth, both players trying their utmost to, you know, to bring victory home here. Um, the time is now starting to dwindle a bit. But once the players shuffle and get reset and jump back into the game, Sander will need to get the fastest Mewtwo V union we've ever seen before or rather the second <laughs> YouTube video <laughs> we've ever seen before into play and, and keep this game from dragging on. Uh, Galarian Zigzagoon just using that headbutt tantrum to deal one extra damage to the Mewtwo. But here we go, Silene, tails and heads. I think that means pal pad. <laughs> yep, finds the pal pad. You get to put the uh, Team Yell's cheer back in, the shuffle two back more. So it, the, the engine is, is definitely staying online. This train has not come off the track just yet. Wow. Also finds the crushing hammer. And it looks like, you know, by taking the energy off of that Drizzile, you're just already trying to play against the, uh, the threat of that Aqua Bullet, Shady Dealings, and Teleon. And eventually, you know, this Palkia is going to go down and Justin is just going to be completely out of threats. Yeah, you can see right now, no energies in the deck left for Justin. Just a training court that he hopefully would like to stick and maybe start to get some water energies back in. But th there's just no real way to do over 200 damage at this point in the game. And it's so tough when you've dedicated so much time to trying to close out a game two and you're staring down this mammoth of a Pokemon on the other side. I, and I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to see it, right? Again, the... the Ability for the Pokemon community just in general to reach so deep into the card pool and understand, well, what about this Pokemon that everybody kind of forgot about? What about this fun kind of promotional mechanic 
that they released. Can I make this work for me? And it looks fantastic. This, and you know that Sanders having a lot of fun. I've <laughs> never seen a deck like put itself intentionally in a game state like this with nothing on the bench, cycling only one or two cards, just almost on the verge of decking out. You're just an adrenaline junkie, aren't you, Sander? We knew it all along. Yes, and it, it has to feel really good when you play a deck as wacky as this and it looks this great. And if sure enough, finds two pal pads right off of that Marnie there. Of course, when your deck is only pal pads and Silenes and all of these uh, ways to just continue to add into your deck and stay in a game like this, you're going to find a lot of cards that make you comfortable. Mm -hmm. Also brings the Avery back, looking to once again narrow this bench. Only a matter of time now here before Justin <laughs> is unable to put up a fight any longer. Yep, not even going to go after a big attack at any point right now. It just looks like feeling content right now with the healing race. I like how the dice are just, <laughs> just moving back and forth off the Mewtwo at this point. Like, Dude. the damage is pre-calculated. <laughs> I heal it, it's back. I heal it, it's back. Justin is just hoping, right, that Sander goes for the Silene rolls two tails or something. Yeah, I think maybe when Sander rolls two heads, that's when he'll feel comfortable grabbing a cook. Um, maybe he feels like that turn is coming up sooner rather than later. And the, the cook turn is where you, you start to feel uh, very comfortable. You, you're getting hit for 140, you heal down to 70, and there's no way that a knockout is coming on the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Continuing and continuing. Justin trying to take a look and see, okay, what supporter are you missing? What can I account for here? What are you going to try to bring back? Even here, when everything's down to the wire in game two, Justin's still trying to calculate and figure out what is my best line of play. How can I find victory? You seen Avery. this play yet? <laughs> yep, there's the Avery. Manaphy goes away. Palkia getting downgraded. That subspace swell can only deal enough damage when the you and your opponent's bench is full. And Sander playing a deck that does not have a bench has just come out and said, I know everybody's going to be playing Palkia, and I'm going to bully it in the most stylish way I can think of. Yeah, this is so clean. Only getting hit for a 120 now. It could be cook time. And when cook comes to play, you usually start seeing some big attacks along the way, too. Yeah, you're, you're, and you know that Sander wants to kind of wipe the bench, and you're just a little bit worried about letting that damage stick on the Mewtwo, right? There's a chance that Justin has... Uh, you know, the ordinary rods or et cetera, things to get those Pokemon back and then just immediately rebench them all at once to, to try to get a bigger subspace swell that you wouldn't be able to deal with. Fuka Muku actually being found, that's adorable. <laughs> Another silent double, double heads. The double heads, and you said it, oh. Kyle, this gives Sander the room, the breathing room to actually shuffle in the cook if he wants it get that extra healing for the turn. Gonna go for Rose Tower, actually. Yeah, Wants they, to kick this training court to keep Justin under control. That's so big, just finding the, the counter stadium right now, too. Just no waters means there's there no attacking. There it is, gets it off the top of Pukimuku, kicks that training court. I'm getting rid of all your energies. Justin just gonna draw and swing back in. Well, you can start to see the plays lining up. Maybe a boss's orders is going to be the line right now. You bring up that Drizzile, and you make your opponent have that water energy. They don't have access to the training court, so it's going to be a card like a, a water from the hand or a scoop up net that's going to continue to bring these Pokemon back to the bench. I thought that this game was certainly going to close out here fast, but Justin is hanging in there, knows that there is still a prayer that you can uh, maybe take down this Mewtwo if, if Sandra slips up here or, you know, rolls the tails a couple times with the Silene, runs out of resources. <laughs> but when it, when it comes to actually being able to put up more of a threat, it, it's just not possible. It, it all comes down to, to Sander actually getting really unlucky or making some sort of slip up here. Pass, and, and Justin is, is waiting to, uh, yeah, finally get into the next game. Yep, ran out of deck, as uh, Justin did. He gave it 
all he had in that game, trying to close out and maybe find a way to get through that huge Mewtwo V Union Pokemon. But sure enough, no way was that happening on Sanders Watch, going to be able to bring this to a game three. And it's going to be very exciting to see how this deck works when you've got 10 minutes on the clock. We're going to see rapid fire play, Kyle. I, if, if the game had ended a little bit earlier, if Justin had, you know, got his mental cracked and just scooped up, you give your opponent way too much time in game three to run a strategy like that. We were expecting uh, Mewtwo to just attack a little bit more, but Justin was able to maintain just the right amount of threat level to where Sander had to go for a grindy game plan instead. And that was the key, not opening up the opportunity to just have Sander attack and end the game. Yeah, that ability from Justin is probably what saved him at least one match point in this, in this situation right now, because there's no way that Sander closes out with, with 11, 10 minutes to go, you'd think. Surely, if you're a Palkia player, you feel a lot more comfortable given this short window of opportunity. You can potentially blow out this control style of deck, and it's very hard for your opponent to do the same to you. Yeah, you know what your deck is capable of, and Sander just very confidently, once the Mewtwo came into play, just scooped up the bench and immediately went into this, this loop of the Silene and the Team Yell and the Pal Pad and was feeling very confident that, that Justin would not have any threat from there. Only one V Union piece oh, we lost in the foot. prizes, but that's okay. We've got the Peonias ready to go search that out. And now Sander with four Snorlax in the deck is very happy to see one starting off here in the active spot to begin drawing immediately for the rest of the pieces. Two in hand. Oh, oh yeah. If, you, if you're gonna get V Union down and try to get a win in 10 minutes, you're off to a fantastic start. I don't know if the rest of the hand was uh, going to be as cooperative. We did see Peonia, so maybe that leads into something. But a lot of those cards can't initially be played until you find that uh, that Galarian Meowth to start discarding. So uh, we'll have to see if Sanders able to find that. Meanwhile, on the other side, Justin feeling very comfortable with the Battle VIP Pass, the Radiant Greninja, to potentially get this hand a little bit bigger and uh, accelerate some water energies by way of the discard pile later mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and Justin just, again, has a strong foundation. There's still going to be a lot of time eaten up by this Sobble searching as well. The time is ticking down. This could just be a tie in game three. But what a set it was. Like, just to be here at this moment and see Mewtwo v Union, unironically, like, Sander, well-known, storied player in the community. If he's bringing it, you know that it's a serious idea. Here's oh, Peonia. You have to draw the right prize cards. Doesn't find quick it. Quick ball. Yeah, this hand was not good. Multiple scoop up nets, a crushing hammer, two V Union pieces, and a twin. And now going to be able to potentially get that quick ball. And then you can find the uh, the Galarian Meowth, start to discard some cards, and then Gormandize. Because this hand has had no way to move many of these cards. Yeah, you, exactly. You've got to narrow it down. We need Ultra Balls. We need something. So now, Sander, going through again the extra mental work of knowing what cards did I just put back into my prizes. Normally, when you search through the deck, you figure out what your prizes are, and then that's locked in. But Sander has to do this multiple times over the course of the game, and you got to make sure not to lose track of a key piece. Um, Mewtwo V Union piece number one hits the discard pile, and Sander taking the opportunity to just once again dig through the deck, see what exactly is missing, sees that that fourth Mewtwo piece is still in the prizes for sure and is going to need to find that second Peonia to fish it out. Yeah, I guess there's a little debate here if you want to go for the Snorlax or potentially the, uh, the Galarian Meowth. You could get that discard and then start to draw up even bigger with the Gormandize, but maybe having a second Pokemon that can use Gormandize will make you feel a little more comfortable. You're not uh -huh. gonna draw nearly as many cards, but uh, the play of the game right now is survive. <laughs> you're trying to survive. You, this is the part of the game where Sander actually needs a bench because you're gonna have to buy some time by sending up these single prize Pokemon uh, for Justin to KO. But Justin does have the setup here with the Palkia V-Star, maybe using that, uh, that star portal, putting the water energy down onto the Radiant Greninja, getting some spread damage. And if you can get the knockout, empty out Sanders' bench, maybe this game will actually come to a conclusion here in the next few minutes. 
Yeah, I expect Justin to get very aggressive very quickly. He might smell blood in the water just seeing Peonia as the only supporter right now. No real uh, plays coming down from Sanders' side. Even the scoop up net just to get one extra card. It shows the desperation, but it's also correct. Just need to give yourself as many opportunities to find more Pokemon and start to work your way through this deck. Gorman dies, finds just more bits and pieces, but nothing that seems like it's going to come together just yet. You know, trekking shoes can go a long way, but we need a lot more than that. Justin now in the perfect setup. Radiant Greninja, Palkia has the Sobble number three as well to join its brethren on the bench. And it just means that Justin's all ready to go, right? Yeah. It's and Sander is way far behind here with no ways to get these V Union pieces into the discard pile. Yep, we get to see the Radiant Greninja drawing up again with those concealed cards. Plenty of cards in the hand right now for Justin. And I don't know if we see all of the pieces to get it going, but we do see, I believe, a Drizzile and the Evolution. It's, oh, it's just the Drivel Evolution instance there. So going to be able to get Drizzile and maybe start chaining something together. A relevant attack is just a Palkia V-Star away, it seems. Yeah, get the Drizzile, cycle even further, maybe get the second Drizzile, find the Palkia V-Star. It's just this beautiful cascade of search where the Drizzile evolves the next and evolves the next. Um, so Justin has the, the attack potential here with the subspace swell, or again, the attachment to the Radiant Greninja. If you can land two Moonlight Shurikens on these Snorlaxes, maybe Sander just does not have any Pokemon available, and you can close out. Justin is, I think, happy either way, trying to take a tie here in game three, or somehow being able to be so incredibly aggressive, finally, when, the, when it's coming down to the wire, that you can take a surprise true win here. Yeah, finding the Irida, going to go ahead and find the Origin Form Palkia V-Star along with the Evolution Incense, which will lead into likely Inteleon on the following turn. Just going to have access to all the cards in his deck is Justin. And now you get to go ahead and use this Origin Form Palkia, use that Star Portal ability, get these energies into play, and start taking knockouts on these Snorlax. Yep, Heavy Ball going to take a look in the prizes. There is a Manaphy there. Going to go ahead and grab that. It's not quite necessary, but again, just knowing what else is in the prizes, uh, is just a nice shortcut to refresh your memory and just going to slam those right back down. Nothing too relevant currently, like Irida and Drizzile ending up on the bottom is beautiful to see. And now with the attachment to Palkia ready to go, Snorlax goes down. Sander has one more turn to make something happen here. You're going to be out of basic Pokemon, my friend. Yep, do you see the nod from Justin going ahead and attaching that energy? That is because of the multiple crushing hammers that he's seen on the other side from Sander. And Sander is going to make his way through the deck right now, it seems. Ultra Ball getting rid of another Mewtwo V Union piece. And uh, this hand does finally have a decent supporter in Professor's Research, so not dead in the water just yet. Discarding the Evatel means that Sander is confident that things aren't that bad, right? Have to just bench this in order to buy one more turn. Going to keep looking through, making absolutely sure of the line of play, maybe trying to find that Meowth. Picks up the second, the third Snorlax, rather. Going to keep Gormadizing, going to keep drawing. Sander sticking to his strategy. When you are playing a deck like this, I think that you have to recognize that there's only so much you can do to pivot around what your opponent is doing. You have to consistently focus on doing your strategy and force your opponent to deal with it instead. Yes, and uh, getting cards is the name of the game here. Sander uh, recognizing that and is going to just continue to draw and find as much as he can to stay in the game. You need those basic Pokemon in play so that you can continue to, to last a little longer. And maybe a card like Cape of Toughness is something that can assist you in spots like this. Pukamuku is found, immediately pitched to the bottom of the deck to draw one more card. We have another Ultra Ball for Sander. Has to decide what are the best discards here. One Crushing Hammer is not going to do it from this position with three energy on the Palkia. Do you well, see the Psychics going into the discard? Yet again, those are very nice later on for the Mewtwo if you are able to get all the pieces together. Yep, just going to discard, keep on searching, keep on searching. That's all Sander can really do from this position. And Justin closing in on victory. Just needs two more attacks to take down these uh, Snorlaxes. Not too much else coming out from Sander. Only a few minutes left in the round once time is called. That's going to give Justin, you know, two or three more attacks to really close out this game. 
think we finally may see our friend, the Galarian Meowth, sneaking in. Nice way to thin your hand out a little more if you want to just start to really burn through your deck and draw more cards with Gormandize. Yeah, once you get the Meowth down, discarding two cards from your hand is amazing. So you can, is what you want in order to get those V-Union pieces down. The issue, however, Kyle, is that that fourth piece is still in the prizes. Sander needs to find that Peonia and take another gamble of pulling three prize cards and hoping one of them is that fourth piece. Yeah, it's, it's so tough at this stage, especially just understanding how long you've already been at the table. There's no way there's enough time for you to, to yeah. take all of these prize cards. But if you can't even find the last piece of your Mewtwo V Union, there's no hope for that. And meanwhile, you see Justin just taking prize cards left and right here, trying to make use of every second that's on the clock right now. Marnie, just in case, Sander did just do a lot of card draw, a lot of cycling. Um, maybe this allows him to draw back into the Peonia, but another Snorlax goes down, another prize taken. Justin closing in on a victory here in game three. Just one more minute left to go in Swiss round two. What a grind it has been for sure. That second game when the Mewtwo V Union finally hit, it entirely turned the tides of how the game was going. But here in the third game, Sanders really struggling to even make that part of the game plan happen. And uh, time is going to be called here very shortly. And if Sander can't find any more Pokemon to bench, Justin, I think, has just enough time to attack twice and take it all. Yeah, and you can see Sander understands that completely. You have three prize cards to give before you get that Mewtwo V Union in play and just has to get the hand down as low as possible. Try to find that Peonia and maybe you do find that Mewtwo piece so that you can finally get it into the active spot and at least start healing and making sure that Justin isn't taking big knockouts every single turn. Gorman dies has gone off multiple times this game, but Sander still somehow struggling to find the pieces that he needs. Seven more cards in the hand. And I don't think I scoped a Peonia there. Oh, this is so dangerous. If the Mewtwo isn't able to come down and it's just these three Pokemon, Justin would have to announce an attack right now for time not to be a factor. But this is just way too many Pokemon. Maybe there's a, a, a world where you can uh, Use a, get your Radiant Greninja charged up and take a double knockout on the Galarian Meowth if you can work your way through the Cape of Toughness with a with a tool, a tool Jammer. Try to get some sort of spread damage here for sure. That could be the way, um, but there's the energy attachment. Marnie number two just trying to absolutely cut off any chance that Sander is going to have the cards that he needs in hand. Four more drawn, got a Pukamuku, Avery, Helps just a little bit, but the KO comes through. Justin still trying to slowly whittle through Sanders' bench. Every time we see big attacking decks that look so strong and so dominant, the opponent has ways to slow them down by just offering up the single prize Pokemon instead. Well, it's Sander a speed has limit, a lot right? Of time, yes. <laughs> On how many time, how many turns it's actually going to take you to truly end the game? We do see the Rose Tower in hand, the Pow Pad as well. So there's potential to maybe work your way towards looking in those prize cards one more time with the Peonia. Just Avery this turn. Avery finds the trekking shoes. It's great, too, that Sander is still able to fight back versus the double Marnie. Not really uh, dead draws to speak of. Decides to keep the mill tank. Goes for crushing hammer and does hit the heads. Notices the Radiant Greninja trying to find its way into the game. He's going to say no to that. I want to keep this Palkia only taking one prize per turn rather than this Radiant Greninja trying to set up the spread damage. Yeah, Miltank with the Miracle Body is going to be a tough Pokemon for Justin to work through at this point in the game. It's just, it's just something that his Palkia can't really work towards. Radiant Greninja isn't taking it off the board at any point. It'd have to be Aqua Bullet from Inteleon, and that just doesn't uh, work very well with the prize exchange right now, being that we are in time. Rose Tower finding its place as well. Going to give Sander a chance to draw even more cards. But again, Mew in the, the Mewtwo in the prizes is the final obstacle that Sander just can't overcome. This is, you know, just a very uh, 
middling style of control. You've got the mill tank here that can't take damage from Pokemon V, and that's going to make it very hard for Justin to truly end the game, but he doesn't really need to at this point, right? You're just playing towards a, a tie here, seeing how the rounds are actually going to play out. And there's another attack, another basic down, another prize taken, and now mill tank is her time to shine in the active <laughs> spot and going to try to find, you know, something that you can attack with, try to finally get this Radiant Greninja powered up. Yep, that looks like it's going to do it here for us. That's going to end in a tie, just not enough to take six prize cards for Justin and Sander not able to get that Mewtwo V Union down in miracle form uh, in game three here. So. Just going to have to settle with that amazing game two on our minds for quite yeah. some time. Yeah, what really it came down to was the Mewtwo Union hit. It was such a big threat, such a big wall. But Justin's ability to recognize 